Hi there. This uh, program today uh, is a result of something that happened last week, which was most unfortunate because I had a live stream going and um, some idiot decided that uh, he or she would interfere uh, by posting obscene comments. You know, it's really kind of crazy because I don't have a huge audience and so, uh, I don't know, maybe at any given time I have maybe 30 or 40 people watching. So um, I'm not like celebrity status, and I'm certainly no famous artist, um, but um, I figure this person's a real amateur because, and so am I, because I actually didn't know how to kick this person off the program. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm pre-recording um, because that way I can focus on the work and maybe it'll be a better lesson and you know, I'm learning as I go here. So uh, I hope that this goes well and I hope that you'll enjoy this. Um, I can still see thumbs up and uh, um, if I do this the right way, we'll see how it goes. I'll you actually be able to make comments on the stream as it comes through as well, um, although this is pre-recorded. So, um, this is an experiment. I uh, hope you'll bear with me while I learn all of these things and uh, try and teach you a few things that I've learned over the years as well. Uh, if you're watching this now, thank you for showing um, showing up and um, let's, uh, let's get started. So, the program uh, that I was attempting to to show last time is about rhythm in, in painting. And, um, you know, rhythm is one of those sort of uh, funny things. We, we learn about rhythm, certainly with sound, you know, with children. And if you watch little children, uh, they'll dance to music before they can even talk. So that's really something. It's something very primal. It's something that we recognize on, on a level that goes deeper than uh, than the spoken word, uh, and it's a in its way sort of uh, is an art form that resonates with us again at a primal level. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who know a whole lot more than I do about it. But um, I find myself tapping my finger if it's something that's that's appealing and it resonates with me. And there are other rhythms that just don't do anything for me at all. So so it is with the arts. You know, some paintings we look at and they don't do anything for us, and others we appreciate and we spend some time um, getting into the painting and, and trying to uh, get a feeling from it, or we automatically get a feeling from it. So I would like to try, I'm going to attempt to build a painting using rhythm, this idea of rhythm. And there are a lot of different kinds of rhythm that you can use. Uh, some rhythms are very calm, uh, you know, so they're very gentle brush strokes, and maybe they're on a horizontal. Some uh, rhythms are a lot more uh, exciting where, you know, the verticals, let's say, that are, are jumping around and, and uh, um, creating uh, more excitement when you look at it. You, you know, you want to see where the eye is going. And, and rhythm is one of those things where you can actually lead uh, the viewer to where you want them to look. Uh, sometimes it's just pattern. And I've seen lots of paintings where especially in abstraction, where there's just some pleasing pattern of some sort, and that's a play between uh, different colors, different values, um, different shapes. I always uh, appreciated Gustav Klimt's paintings because although he painted many figurative things, and especially early in his career, uh, as he advanced, uh, he started creating designs in his uh, paintings, and of course he's probably known best uh, for one of his paintings, The Kiss, and you can see all kinds of rhythm and pattern and, and movement in, in that painting. And it's great to explore uh, what he's done in that painting. You know, the figures are quite distorted and quite un unusual, but somehow or other in the composition he maintains a, 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 a form that we want to look at, and of course human form is something that we recognize, and we're attracted to, um, and uh, 
He's created a lot of movement in that painting. So uh, let's see what we can do. I'm going to attempt a cafe painting. Uh, this is a Cafe Sparrow in Vienna. And um, uh, it's a shot that I took some years ago. And uh, I just thought it might be interesting to try. Uh, and hopefully as I'm doing this, it'll start to make sense. I'm, the, I'm going to show you how I'm approaching this and, and you can try this on your own if you want, of course. Uh, but this is just another way to start a painting and uh, see if that helps to hold it together. All right, so let's get to this now. Um, my colors are, are warm for the most part. Um, I've got uh, a transparent oxide red. Uh, I've got a green, a viridian green, which, you know, you can push either towards warm or cool, really. Um, and I've got a yellow ochre, which is a cool yellow, but I've also got uh, cadmium yellow, and I've got cadmium orange and cadmium red light. So uh, uh, we're leaning more towards the warm side of things um, in this palette. And the odd little cool uh, color may pop in here. Uh, in there. Let's see how this goes. So when I'm looking at my reference and because this is pre-recorded I think it probably would be a good idea at some point to show you what the original image looks like that I'm painting from so you can get a sense of how this evolves. Uh, I'm just going to show you briefly the idea of where the rhythm picks up for me here. I'm just going to take the color, it's a bit of transparent oxide red, and I want you to imagine that I'm trying to conduct an orchestra, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to use these strokes that come in from the top. Here I'm just constructing, you know, like I want this kind of pattern, this kind of flow to be happening here. And you can see they're all kind of heading the same direction. There's a bit of a rhythm there. And then in this area right here, I'm going to counter that rhythm with something a little stronger this way. This will make hopefully more sense as, as I get into this. And these areas over here are a little calmer. So I'm, I'm not going to get into too much excitement in these areas. These are areas that hopefully will be soft transitions that lead your eye into this a uh, core area that has this rhythm that kind of brings you down to this area right here. And in the bottom there's going to be kind of a almost like an arrow sort of thing if this works out the way I want it to that takes you into the painting in this direction. So the more that I can bring you to this zone, the uh, more that I can uh, do to bring you to this zone, the better. So let's see how this shapes out. I like to start paintings sometimes. This is on a white oil primed board. And so I'm just gonna put some color down. It doesn't all have to be the same color. I'm just gonna put something down to get something going because I, I really don't care much for painting into uh, white canvas all the time directly or white board. So I'm just gonna throw some color in, get this going. And right now it's a big mess with the rhythm that's going all over the place. But since I've shown you what my concept is ahead of time, a little bit of planning, uh, it's an exercise uh, for me to kind of keep me on track. Uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Now I've got some color down there. I'm going to take uh, just a, uh, well, I can take a big soft brush. That's what I think I'll do. Sometimes I'll take a rag and go over an area like this, but I want to leave a little more color in here. And I'm going to keep this really loose. This is a very soft brush, by the way. I want to keep the brushwork quite soft and just kind of start getting a mood going here. Just cover that up. The nice thing about working on an oil primed board is that it's very smooth, it's very easy to remove this color because it's oil. And um, you know, sometimes you get these interesting areas, they start to drip down a little bit because they've got more medium in there. Um, clean the brush off. If I want to, I could just take a, 
I can take like a clean brush and start taking shapes out, which is kind of a nice way to work. Or I could also, if I wanted to be more precise, I can use a Q-tip to take, you know, my lights out. You can get some very fine lines of this way if you want to. Um, I'm not at that stage yet. Um, but I can use a brush to sort of get some basic shapes going here. And this is a, a case of trying to draw roughly what I see in front of me. And again, the reference that I'm looking at, there's a lot of information going on in it. In it. And I really don't want to have all that information. I want to edit it down to some simpler elements. So I'm just going to create, you can see this rhythm that's starting already. And I'm just going to bring the color down. Every time I use my brush, I'm cleaning it off on a paper towel. Um, um, what I think I might do, I have this rag here, which is a nice tool to use. You can either use your finger, if you want to, uh, to draw with, with a rag. and Or you can even wrap the rag over the other end of a brush. And, and that works quite well also. So I'm just going to take more paint off of these areas because I want to get a sense of where my light and shadows are. I've got a lighter area that's happening up here. I've got uh, some lighter areas that come down in this rhythm towards an area at the bottom, which is actually fairly light down here. I'm just using my knuckle right now uh, inside this rag to clean that area out. And there's another bit of light that comes in from this side over here. I don't want it to be too important, uh, but it does, it is part of the scene. It helps, you know, create a, a direction towards the center of, of this image here. And in my reference, I don't have as many lights as I'm showing here, but I'm trying to create a rhythm, a pattern that takes my eye down to this area here. And I have other, I still have other rhythms that are softer, so they're not as light. There's more light up here. So I'm gonna take more light out. I just have to move my finger around inside this cloth here. So I get a fresh area. And I can just take that back almost to white. Get my drawing working. Okay. Maybe pick up a couple of lights in here where I need to. Something on an angle that takes me this way. All right. And again, some softer, less pronounced light areas, more half tone kind of feel in these areas down here. A few little details where I need them. And I'm hoping that in this here, some kind of form will follow as I draw into this more. I can always correct these shapes. I could literally take all that paint off if I wanted to at this stage, but I didn't like it. But let's see where, where it goes from here. Uh, now I want to build up some of my darks. Uh, what, what I'm going to use, I've got a bit of ivory black, and you know a lot of artists don't think you should use black. Um, but it's okay to use black as long as you bring some other color into it. I'm bringing in a bit of transparent oxide red. I'm also bringing in a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, which is a cool blue. And that will sort of knock down the, the extreme warmth of that transparent oxide red and give me a rich dark to work with. And I'm going to try to draw with that and create a little bit of a uh, little bit of the darkness that I see around these shapes here. So here I want to be a little bit more precise, but not get crazy precise. Um, I'm, I've not got any media in this, by the way, uh, or any medium. So I'm just drawing here around these shapes, keeping it loose. I really want to just get the feeling of what I see in my reference. I don't need to 
I can always go back and put some detail in where I need to later. And again, I'm hoping I'll show you the reference at some point through the video, maybe back and forth to let you know what I'm working from. Uh, this area up here, I'm going to keep that quite dark and out of the way. Uh, keep it loose. Uh, I'm even going to bring some of that darkness down into these areas here where I really don't need a lot of information because I want us to be looking towards this zone, this zone here if possible. Okay. And at a certain point in time, you might actually figure out what I'm doing. I considered doing this as a time lapse. And again, because I think pre-recording might not be a bad route to go with uh, in the future, because I can take a little more time to refine these things. I might uh, do a combination of time lapse and uh, real time video. So I'm squinting down here. When I say squinting down, I'm closing, like half closing my eyes to look at uh, the shapes that I have and figure out which ones are most dominant, where they should be, where the lightest lights are, the darkest dark areas. And I'm not slavishly following my reference. That's something. I, I want to create something that's interesting for me to look at. Um, obviously, the reference that I'm working from had some appeal. It caught my eye. But I don't have to follow every single shape as I see it. I'm trying to recreate a feeling when I look at this, uh, as opposed to trying to copy everything that's in front of me. Okay. Now, um, I'm trying to, as much as I can, to join shapes as well. So, you know, join my darks, keep those darks all together. And, you know, why wouldn't I join my lights as well? Well, that's possible. You can do that too. So whenever you can keep your values um, joining each other in relationship to each other uh, somehow or other, whether it's the same value or maybe even it's just, the, you know, somewhat the same color, um, that creates harmony and it creates a pattern and a rhythm that Add strength to your painting. I'm just right now painting shapes. I'm not really very concerned about trying to get super accurate drawing. I'm just letting my brush follow the shapes that I think might help this painting overall. And you know, I, I have a lot of there are a lot of younger artists or artists who are starting out and they have questions like, you know, uh, does, it, does it make sense to draw everything ahead of time so that you know where you're going, you know? And I, yeah, I guess it makes some sense if you're really insecure or you're, you're really not sure and you, th you think you'll do a better job if you draw it out ahead of time. But you know, if you learn to draw with your brush, it gives you a lot more confidence with your brush for starters and it allows you to express yourself better the the initial marks that we make the initial shapes that we make when we put down they're honest shapes because we're really truly exploring what's in front of us and if you get used to using a brush to draw with it's really exciting because it's kind of risky, but at the same time, you're developing your brush skills. Um, and eventually, like I find now that drawing it out ahead of time or making a plan other than, you know, sort of a loose idea like this, um, I find the whole drawing thing gets to be a little tedious uh, sometimes. I love to draw and just draw for drawing's sake. But when it comes to doing a painting, I do really like to to uh, draw as much as I can with my brush 
And when you do that again, it just strengthens your ability or confidence with a brush. Um, I kind of feel like I want to break this rhythm very slightly at the top. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a shape that comes in this way against those a little bit there. We'll see if that works out. I may change my mind later. And it doesn't have to be that light, so I can, I can bring that in a little darker. But I just thought it might be nice to kind of switch up the rhythm. It's sort of random, there's a certain order to this here. I want to have shapes, ideally, that are all a little different from each other. Uh, because that creates more interest. Maybe I'll echo that shape here again. My reference is sort of showing me that there are shapes that, that happen on different angles. So your eye has to follow. There's more complexity and it keeps the viewer looking at your work a little longer. That's what happens. And you know, nothing in nature is absolutely man-made items are, are, can be very static and very predictable. You know, it's sort of like Ikea furniture. You've seen one, you've seen a, a bunch. Um, but nature in itself doesn't do that so much. You know, you go out into nature and you find that um, everything is different. Every shape is different. Every leaf is different. You take two leaves and put them side by side and they're completely different from each other. And it wouldn't matter how many leaves you collected. The outside shapes may have some similarities, but when you start looking at them in detail, nothing inside is the same. So when we're painting, um, uh, nature is one of those great, uh, I guess, teachers, if you will, um, because it says, you know what, you don't have to do everything in exactly the same rhythm. Um, doesn't have to look man-made all the time. I'm painting a man-made environment here. Fair enough. Um, but it doesn't, all my shapes don't have to be identical. Uh, I can vary them up and keep some kind of interest going here. Okay, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm going to go into something even darker. I'm going into uh, my ivory black and cobalt blue. And I'm just going to put a couple of accents in here. So I have a sense of grounding down in this area here. And again, I can always take color away if I need to, if it's necessary. It's a fairly dry brush that I'm using right now. When I say that, it's just the paint. I don't have a bunch of medium in it. And if you're wondering what kind of medium, I use uh, basically, you know, a, an odorless thinner and I put a roughly two, two parts uh, thinner and one part linseed oil. So that's all I'm using here. All right. Now this area up here is darker, but not as dark as these areas in here. So I'm going to go in now get into a little bit of the color that I see up there. And I've pre-mixed some of these colors ahead of time, so it saves a little time in this process. But don't ever feel when you're painting that you have to do it all in a hurry either. When I'm doing the live streams, I sort of feel a little under pressure because I feel like, well, you know, people are watching and they're going to get tired of watching me paint. Um, I call my program watching paint dry for a reason. Um, because uh, if you're not a painter, watching for this period of time might have already, you might have already clicked out of this. So that's okay. You can come back, check the end. You can actually slide uh, this, uh, the slider uh, at the bottom uh, of your screen forward and you can see how this goes in a faster way. If it's not time lapse, then you can always push it along a little faster. This color here, I want to pick up in a couple of places in my painting. So I'm just going to pick a little up here 
maybe some over here so that there's also a, a, a rhythm, if you will, of, of color uh, that happens from, from uh, that helps contain everything and keeps things as a whole. Uh, that's always good. I'm just putting shapes in right now. And again, I can just adjust those later. Just want to get a little bit of that color coming down from up here. And I can always create variations in my values. I can go into something a little darker, a uh, darker version of that color. Uh, in towards the corner areas, keep them soft. Keep your edges soft out towards the frame. Because those are the least interesting areas and you don't want people running to the corners of your paintings because that points them out of your painting. Compositionally, it works better if you have soft corners. So again, that's something, you know, I say these things. Um, they're not rules, they're just ideas. That's all they are. So if I always tell my students to soften the edges so when you go around a painting soften the edges down so that they don't become very important i'm trying to create a mood or the sense of peripheral uh, vision and that can be really beautiful if it's done sensitively that can be very beautiful okay i don't want to get too fussy now with my brushwork um, all right, so that's kind of the, the bones of, of this painting so far. Um, this is one I like to kind of step back, just look at it, ask myself, you know, are there areas that need a little more or a little less? I'm going to put something in here because I feel this space could use just another little bit of light over here so that it creates more of an arrow that comes into the, the painting this way. Um, and again, we'll see how that works out. I'm countering this pattern here with patterns that or rhythms that follow the other way. Remember I was doing this in the very beginning. Okay. And the pattern becomes a little jumbled down here. It's a little broken a little jumbled um, and I just want to play with that a little bit because this is organized and so it's kind of predictable and our eye falls down towards this area it gets a little broken and a little less um, easy to figure out so if you make things too easy to figure out people look at your work and then they leave so it's like oh I know that story so it's okay to, to mix it up a little in, in an area that you want to create some interest. Um, maybe I'm even going to pop a couple of lights in that go counter to these shapes here. Uh, so I can bring in a little bit of light here, for example. It, and again, this is not in my reference. Not these lights. But I think that might be kind of fun to do. Let's just see. All right. So this is kind of like the beginning. This is a rough in of sorts with a little bit of color. I want to start bringing more color now in. And, uh, I think uh, at this stage, I also want to establish uh, my very darkest darks and my lightest lights. So, you know, some artists work, like if you were to look at Sargent's work, he would work from his middle values out towards the, um, you know, the, the lights and the darks. Um, in half tones all the way, leaving himself the, the accents at the end. Uh, it really depends on your personality. I find that if I put my accents in earlier on, at least it gives me a sense of the range that I'm working with um, right away. So I know that, oh, I can't go any darker than that. My half tones have to work against those accents. When I say half tones, you know, this is a the the areas that happen really between the lights and the in uh, between the light and shadow in objects half tones do that so um, 
in a case like this, you know, there are loads of different halftones going on. Some of these, those will come out when I get into the color parts of things more. One thing I can recommend also is that when you're painting, you should have lots of paint out so that you can get, you don't have to run to your tubes and mix it all ahead of time. So I've pre-mixed a bunch of color. I had pre-mixed pre all these colors for the last program. And one of the concerns that I had, of course, in coming back to this on a Monday, after a couple of days of not painting, was that all my colors would be dry. So what I did was I put a little bit of, and this is a good thing to know, you can put, if you're working with oil paint, you can put in oil of cloves. Be careful you don't put too much in. But oil of, because, you know, it'll never dry. But oil of cloves will keep your paint wet a very long time. And I haven't covered them with anything. Uh, you know, I haven't taken any saran or anything like that to cover it with. I've just let the oil of cloves do its job. And it keeps your paint wet a long time. Again, be careful not to put too much in, uh, like just a couple of drops for a pile of paint. Um, because if you do, it, it'll take months to dry. In some cases, I've made a real mess because I put too much in and then it didn't dry and I needed to get it to the gallery. And of course, I couldn't because it was still wet, so. All these things come to you with experience and practice. Okay. Now I'm just playing with the brush here right now, just refining a little more as I go. And you can see I've got some, you know, a lot of my darks now that where they need to be. Um, now it is a, a warm light situation, but I'm going to also play with that idea a little. I'm going to keep my light slightly cooler and I'm going to keep my, which means that my areas in shadow are going to be a little bit warmer. Um, I want to bring a little bit of color into this painting now um, and just start to see if I can't create a little more interest in some areas. So I've just taken a bit of that medium I was telling you about earlier and I'm going to start blocking some color. The color underneath is going to come through this color, by the way, just a little. So when I put these colors down, that's going to neutralize the colors. You can see I'm mostly working with the same brush here, um, by the way. And sometimes it's good to change up your brush as well because you end up with too many of the same kinds of brush strokes. So I'm saying that, and since I'm saying that, I should really do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab another brush here. Um, I'm going to start to this is a bigger brush. I'm just going to start to block color in where I think it might work. And it gives you a different feeling, you know, when you put brush strokes down like this than the other brush that I was using. And of course you can use combinations of brushes to, to vary it up where you need to. It can have more intense color in some areas, less intensity in other areas. And I don't want to have everything too much the same color. I'm just dropping a couple of colors in here and there where I think they might work. Um, I'm just using the edge of the brush here to create some interest down this way. It's pulling paint off. It's not leaving color on. I flip the brush over and it leaves color on. So that's a little technique you can use if you want to. You drag your brush down to pull the paint off, flip the brush over, and on the other side of your brush you have clean color. And that will give you 
let's do it over here just to show, well, I'll do this in one of these sections here. I'm going to drag the color. Well, I've got too much color there and drag the color down, flip the brush over and put in some fresh color right there. Drag the brush down, pick up some fresh color if I need to and drop it down. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab a couple more colors here just to create more interest. I want to get some color going up in here as well. I get that sense of light that's happening. And I need to have a sense of transition from light into the shadow areas. This is really the, you know, the fun part for me. Um, it really is because I never know exactly how this is going to go. Like I, you know, you don't, when you paint this way, you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants and leaving fresh brush strokes really helps uh, the interest in, in a painting. Bringing in a little more intense color here and there just to get a sense of where you want the eye to, to go. Now I've got that intense color there. The light's going to pick up in a few areas below. So I'm going to just drop some colors in here. Let them find their way down. Okay. At a certain point in time, you can even use a palette knife if you want to get some really clean color going. I tend to wait till the end to do that sort of thing when I'm working, starting out with a brush like this. I want to take some light out of here. Again, I'm looking at shapes right now and trying to get shapes that make sense for this image. Trying to eliminate as much as possible all the clutter that I don't need. And this is pretty busy right now. So I don't need to have a lot of clutter. I just want to keep my shapes really simple and bold. Let the eye come up to this area here. Turning the brush over, letting, letting some of these things happen, these accidental things that create more interest. Okay. Let's see what happens when I start bringing some of this color in. Your grays are your friends, by the way. Um, if you have too much intense, intense color going all over the place, they're all crying for attention. Your grays are those areas that set them off. It's sort of the backdrop to the colors that really jump. Okay. Just getting into a little more detail in the shapes here. Letting the brush do its thing.
you can see I've got a lot of, it's a hodgepodge of a lot of things going on here. But the, this rhythm is broken by this area down here. I want to pick up a few different colors now. And get a little more interest going in areas that are just a little dull at the moment. And trying to be, you know, accurate to a point, but not crazy accurate. Just chunking things in. Trying to feel the rhythm of all of this, the whole thing. Trying to paint the whole thing at the same time, which is, of course, impossible to do. But um, I can put things down as my eye sees certain colors. And trying to stay loose uh, and fresh, but at the same time, somewhat precise. So, you know, that's the... It's kind of like walking a tightrope, really. Um, you have to balance a lot of things at the same time to make these things work. So, and just trust yourself, you know, trust that you can do it. Why not? It's just paint and it's just a brush and it's just you, you know, in the meditation of, of painting, if that makes any sense. Using a big brush really helps a lot because it forces you to simplify. Also thinking about edges a lot. You know, where do I want to have my sharp edges? You can see I put a little cooler color up in there. That's something that hops out against all those warm colors in the background. And I'm going to do the same in these areas where the light catches these objects here. There's a nice play of warm and cool that happens because of that, you know. And we very rarely see white, pure white, in a scene because it, so much that we look at, of course everything that we look at is dependent on the, the light source. So if your light source is cool, you're going to see some blues in it. Maybe you'll even see some cool greens in it, but you'll see some color in it. So I've got color that's happening in my whites. If you want to see great examples of whites, just look at Joaquin Sorolla's work, and you will see incredible colors in, in his lights. He was famous for painting beach scenes and so on. And also white cloth. If you look at the, the, the clothing that people wear, or maybe people are stitching or whatever, there's, some very, there's a very famous one where women are repairing sails, and the colors that he has going in the light areas are absolutely phenomenal. Just incredible. Um, but because they're all the same value, or close to each other in value, when I say that how light or dark things are, it really works because uh, the values hold it together, and then there's this play of color back and forth in the light areas, so.
He was a master at that, for sure. Monet was also incredible this way because he would play with color. Again, using a very little bit of color in, in his whites or his lights. Maybe they shouldn't be called whites, they should be called lights. That's probably more appropriate. Now something that's happened when I'm looking at my rhythm here, all these spaces are looking very similar to each other. You know, the spaces in between. So at this stage, because the paint is wet, um, I can change that up. I can literally go in with a clean brush, I clean my brush off, and I can start to pull these shapes together more. So that there's a sense of change in the negative shapes. And you can see, hopefully, when I get a little more precise with this, how that's gonna work. I, I clean my brush off in between every time when I'm doing this because um, I wanna keep, a, I wanna keep this clean and crisp, but Sometimes you can let a little bit of color sneak into the edges that you're cleaning up. Pushing the paint away this way. That's okay to do. I just want to get those negative shapes to be a little more interesting. So painting is always a process of, of correcting and refining as you go, I'm going to put another little shape right in here. I feel like that could work. And let's just be a little more accurate with this one. So as I was saying, it's a process of correcting, putting it down, correcting it, putting it down again, correcting it again, doing whatever you need to do in order to create the sensation that you want to have in your in your work. I'm even going to bring this one a little higher. Now I've been able to create a little more interest in the negative shapes, but I also have to be careful that I don't do them all the same way. Because if I do, then I've just gone and done exactly the thing that I was trying to counter. So I want to make sure that I have enough variety in my negative areas. And I say negative shapes as those are the areas that are not the subjects themselves. These are areas you can soften down a little bit too. You know, when you get into the background, um, I can knock that back with a color. Just taking a little paint away and putting a little more paint in there uh, with a little color. It takes its value down, but it, there's something there of interest. I want to bring um, a richer color across the bottom here, just to take the eye over and give a foundation to this rhythm that comes down. There's something that happens over there, but it's not important. So if it's not important, I can keep it soft. I can even throw a little bit of color into that. And we know there's something going on there, but we don't know what it is, and it's not important because these are the areas that are. I'm keeping my eye moving around the whole painting. Again, always trying to look for the areas that need the contrast and, and you know, pull my eye towards, uh, pull my eye towards these central areas again going into the darks 
It's okay to go back in and accent things again wherever you need to. It's quite fine to do that. Just keep that. You know, there's a rhythm in painting also. So as much as I'm talking about uh, the rhythm of the subject, there's also this rhythm of painting. So when you get into a frame of mind, um, a certain feel, you, you start to enjoy the feeling of the brush against the canvas or the board. Um, that creates a rhythm in itself as well. And when you're enjoying what you're doing, um, the viewer picks up on that. They get a sense that, well, this is kind of fun. Like, you know, it's a little playful. It's not super accurate. It doesn't matter. I get a sense of the mood and the feeling. I think I know what the artist is trying to say. Um, I think I know what the scene is about. Sometimes the smallest little details will pick a painting up. I don't need to put a lot in here. Just a couple of accents. I don't have to tell the whole story. Getting into these rich darks now, I actually want to bring in even a cooler color. So I'm putting a bit of blue in here. And of course, this is a slippery surface, so when I do, some of that blue in the brushwork shows through. If I really press into it, you can see the blue almost up against, like in a semi-transparent way, up against the background. And that creates interest as well. Okay, so this is a, um, a curious stage right now because there's a lot of stuff right now going on that is all getting similar uh, attention. And one thing I like to do often, because I find right now there's a lot of stuff getting the same attention and it's kind of chunky and there are a lot of edges that are, are grabbing my attention. So I'll take a, a putty knife like this, and I'm going to drag the putty knife through this. This is risky, because sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it just makes a mess of it. So, um, I'm, but I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this putty knife, and I'm just gonna try to drag, lightly drag. And you see, I have to, have to make sure that it's very clean. There's no bits and pieces on it, because that's what happens when, when there is. So I'm just going to drag the putty knife down. You can see it's picked up little bits and pieces, which are a bit of a problem. So you have to be really careful when you're doing this, that because it's such a sensitive surface that the you don't get too many bright lights. So you can, I can go back in with a very soft brush now and just knock some of those lights away. It's okay if they're there, but you just want to control that a little bit. Again, with a clean brush, it's important that your brush is very clean when you do this. Um, I can soften areas down. Even, even these kinds of things where it went a little, you know, pull the darks into the lights and so on. Um, it gives it a different feeling altogether. So I'm going to drag some more down through this and let's just see what happens. It's funny, just the tiniest little fine piece of grid or something grabs and drags down. You get some very fine 
lines happening this way. I'm going to drag from the bottom upwards as well. And, you know, this seems like, well, are you making a big mess, Andrew? Well, that's okay, because we can go back into this. This is just sort of like, again, helps the block in area. And I can recreate what I need to over top of this. I'm going to go back into these areas that just got a little too strong. Just dust some of those sharp edges out of there. Um, the other thing that happens when you do this is it pulls different colors together. So it creates kind of a harmony of sorts. Um, nothing is fixed yet. Like nothing is like this is the finish. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not there. That's, that's not what this is about. This is just to try and, and create some texture, some interest that gives the sense of depth more. Um, it's hard to paint these things. Uh, you know, if I wanted to try and paint an area like this, I wouldn't do that um, any other way but dragging colors together. And the other thing that happens when you when you do this is that you find that areas get gray. And again, your grays are the things that set off your bright colors. So um, right now it looks like a little mucky, you know, that's what it looks like. That's okay because I can go in now with fresher color. So. Okay, so that was interesting. Um, sometimes I'll even like go into an area just with medium and and uh, let it drip and just pull color away completely. Go back into that and refine it later. So this is an evolution. That's what this is. Now I'm just going into this area here and I'm thinking more now, a little more about finished brush strokes. I'm using a big brush still, that's okay, um, but I want to think about maybe refining my shapes a little more, again without being pedantic, without getting too fussy, keep them fresh. But think about, you know, what am I seeing when I look at this? What kind of shapes am I seeing? Are they flat shapes? Are they transitional shapes? What are my edges doing? How do I make this look like it's turning? Or how do I make this more crisp where the light catches a certain spot? So all of those little thoughts go through your head, but at the same time, it's not like you are trying to, it's not like a rule book. Um, these are just random thoughts, and but be aware and be empty at the same time, if that makes any sense. Empty to explore what you see in front of you and respond to that. Um, alert enough to put in the shapes that work for the subject. Looking at basically three values here, and I want to try and represent them with simple strokes that tell the story. And this is just drawing with one edge of a flat brush, that's all I'm doing now. Okay. 
I don't want to get too caught in one area. That's another danger, you can say. Like if I'm just focusing so much in one area that I'm spending all my time there, that can be an issue because if then you've got one area that's all detailed and the rest of it is just all big fuzzy mess. So um, I want to be thinking about the whole painting at, at the same time as much as I can. And getting back, squinting, um, those are things that you can do on a regular basis. Just getting back from your work. Um, sometimes looking at it on a device, like right now, if I look at this on my uh, phone, which I'm recording with, it's a very small image that I see on my phone, but it gives me a sense of the composition quite quickly. And I can tell often whether something's working or not um, when I see it small. If it works when it's small, then chances are it's going to work when it's larger as well. I'm really going into these darks here now to anchor this bottom area. Just trying to respond to the shapes that I see. There's something back here. Pushing the brush up to pull the paint away. You get these nice little edges that happen quite incidentally when you do that. Or accidentally. Okay, I'm going to um I just want to clean a few areas up here, some more, closer to the focal uh, area, focal point. And the paint is still quite thin at this stage. I haven't gotten into big thick brush strokes here. I go back in and clean out some of these mucky spots that happened when I dragged everything together. I go through lots of paper towels when I do this, which isn't the greatest thing for the environment. So sometimes I just use rags because the rags absorb well and Somehow or other, they feel more environmental or better for our environment. I don't know if it's true or not. Okay. Now there's more of a sense of uh, light and the feel that I've been looking for compared to what it was before because so much was softened down when I dragged that scraper through everything. I'm going to I'm going to soften the outside even more just with this great big soft brush and. Then I'll go back into the areas where I want more focus. You can see when I do that, things flatten out, they become related to each other, and it gives me a chance to go back in and push areas up where I want to. This kind of thing happens when I'm doing this as well. You know, the colors start 
flying around. And it gives me the mood that I'm looking for. And I still have that rhythm. So what I'm thinking about as I go through this. All right. I'm going to start picking up a little more paint now and try to take it into a little more finish as I go. Get that cooler light up there. I think I'm going to bring in a flat brush. I can put it in here. And the flat brushes have disappeared. There we go. Got it. And bring some of that cool light into some of these frames that are on the wall. And I'm just responding to the lights that I see in my reference at this stage. Some beautiful little um, gold colors that happen that follow the eye down, uh, that, that make your eye fall down. And I want to try and pick up on some of those as well. So with a clean palette knife, pick up a controlled amount of color and just drop it in. And again, I don't want to make it this a formula. That's, that's dangerous. Pick up a different kind of, uh, yellow, for example. And go right into that pure cad lemon that I have up in here. And just throw that up in that area. And I think I'm going to do the same for the other light. It's over here. That may be a little strong. I can always deal with that later. Or maybe I just leave it nice and fresh like that. Let's, we'll see. So this is where the palette knife is interesting because you've got um, these sharp little edges that appear and they don't all have to be bright. They're just picking up light, these sharper edges. I could, I can even drag through, um, it just drag a, a clean uh, palette knife through the paint at this stage and that gives me some very crisp edges as well. When it goes over an area like that, you just pull it off with a fingertip. And you can see I've not, I haven't gone into a super amount of detail here. I'm still working towards getting a mood, a feeling. A few crisp edges will help. Oops, I didn't mean to drop my palette. 
<laughs> that happens. Always have something on the ground so that I don't make a mess of everything. A few colors that are going on in here. This play of warm and cool. Sense of things happening here, but I don't want you to look at them too long because I want us to come down to this area here, ideally. In the background sometimes, you can pick up a subtle color Got something cool there against the warmth. I have no idea what I just did there, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I don't mind it. I picked up another color accidentally, so. Sometimes accidents can really work for you too. This is kind of the abstraction that I like in paintings like this because um, it, it's the fun part where your palette knife and your tools put things down that leave marks that are less natural, or when I say less natural, more natural uh, than deciding, oh, it has to be just like so. And yes, there are areas that we want to make sure we're precise with, but they don't have to all be precise. Our eyes don't see everything precisely at the same time. Refining this little character here a little more, and I'm going to this. I'm going to do this a little differently because at this stage, um, I don't like the shape that I'm seeing there. It doesn't match up with uh, what's in my reference, so I'm just going to create a bit of a blob here. That's all I'm going to do: move the paint around, create a blob. That I think is in better proportion in this mucky color, that's all it is. It's like a blobby head. There we go. And then I can go into that and pull up the shapes that will turn this into a head. I'm just putting some darks in here. And again, drawing with a brush, right? So that's that's key. So to feel comfortable, to get rid of things, come back to them, refine them, make them more what you want. go in behind his head a little with a little bit more color because that brings more attention to that area and you can see as I'm putting this color in I have to be careful that I'm not taking color off because this surface is so slippery So getting a feel for how much paint you can put on your brush and how much you can put down 
and still make it work. Now you can see I've got a big blue area there that's kind of standing out. That means that I'm going to have to introduce that in other points here so it feels more like the background. So these are the kind of calls you can make when you're doing this stuff. Now I want to be a little more precise. Um, I'm going to just put in a basic flesh color here. I need to add a little bit of white to that so it's a little more opaque. And try and get my shapes to work. Again, it's very loose at this stage. And this is like a bristle brush, so it's not, it's a synthetic, but it feels like a bristle brush. So, you know, it just pulls the paint around on the surface. And you can soften with it if you want to. To the dark here also got his hair to contend with here and I want to get a sense of light and shadow because uh, the light hits his face very small part of his face right in here and also across the bridge of his nose maybe his chin go back into my original color that you know if you want to make a fine line you can paint up against a line you don't have to make it just a fine line with your brush you can paint against the line, so push the color back. I don't know how well you can see this. At some point, maybe I should do some detail uh, live streams, or, or streams rather, so that you can see the real details. That would be maybe a good thing. I need to go back into this background and just get his outside shape working better. So. You know, he has a neck. And you can see here I've got a problem with the shoulders, right? The drawing, I need to knock those down. So it feels more natural. Now it's starting to look more like a human being. Still, his head's a little big compared to my reference. And the way this looks right here, um, you, I can almost really make all of his head disappear into the background. I can do that. That's sort of this idea of tying all your values together. I'm just going to soften this back with a big brush. So I can, I can tie all that together and then just pick up the smallest amount of light coming off the top of his head. Just going to soften in behind him here as well. 
and pick up a little bit of light where I need to across the top of his head. Where his hair is catching a bit of light. And what color was the light? It's a little warmer. Maybe I'll even bring a little bit of green into it. And you can pick it up just in the top here. And it's enough. Maybe it picks up just a touch where his ear is. And that's probably too much. So, if it's too much, you clean off your brush, or you go in with a soft brush and just knock it back a little bit. I can always go back and refine things. It's not a problem when you paint this way. All right. Entering the studio. Okay. Okay. My machine kicked out again, of course. So it is a problem. Now I want to get some of this color closer to him, picking up the lights. Some of those cool colors that I like. Keeping the focal area here, keeping it crisp. Looks like waves. There are a bunch of newspapers that are in front of him here. That's what this is. And I think I will pick up also a couple more lights that I had going before. Again with a palette knife. Now, he's actually got a, a laptop in front of him. I find that interesting because it's a nice cool color um, against, or a, I guess it's a computer he's got. A cool color against all the other colors that are going on. So I want to try and imitate what I see from my reference. And let's see if I can make this work. Still playing warm against cool when I'm painting these things. I can take a brush the background just to refine this a little. I 
looks like a little gray or a warmer color to show the outside edge of that device. Just put it in with a simple brush stroke, leave it alone. And maybe a little flash color where his hand is. know pretty quickly that this is a person. We recognize shapes very quickly. Okay, so now when I'm looking at it, I get back from it. A lot of these blues here are, are too strong. So I'm just gonna take them back a little, leave the edges that I like close to him and I'm just going to pull those some of these lights and these blues away a touch and I feel like I need to darken this area down a little more so you get a sense of uh, what's going on in the foreground there, these newspapers that are happening and I'm just right now just going by feel it's very loose bottom part of this painting is only important to serve a base to get us into the painting. That's all it is. An entry point. I'm going to have some grays in here. I'm going to have a couple of different colors because it is a newspaper. And a couple of areas in the newspapers. It may look like photos. color here so our eye goes past that foreground that's the idea we find our way into this painting through the foreground that's what happens when you look at your subjects you tend to look into the foreground first to make sure you're safe and then you go past that into the main information area and I'm just now picking up a couple of shapes that I see in here. And I think I'm even going to bring in a little stronger color up against him here and here. I always keep trying to clean my brush, keep fresh color, even though there's a lot of grays and a lot of kind of mucky looking color. Um, those, those kind of colors support all the fresh color. Again, I think I mentioned that earlier. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, these background colors here are a little dark. I'm just gonna lighten them up a touch. So there's a sense of atmosphere, soften some edges. And deal with that area that was sort of an accident before. Don't mind, I don't mind that. In a sense of light coming down from this light here. This is where, you know, I'm making decisions about where light's gonna fall and I'm not following my reference right now. I'm just playing this along just to see where it goes, to create this mood. up a color that's closer to his head here. I 
and I don't like that, so I'm going to get rid of it. There's enough paint on here now that I can soften color away. There's uh, another technique which is kind of fun. To, if you want to break shapes up, uh, this is a, another way that you can. And that is to take a paper towel. I haven't done this in a little while. But I'm going to take a paper towel and kind of crumple it up like, like so. That's all. And this is going to take paint off and move it around a little bit here and there. So I'm just going to go into my scene like this and this looks a little crazy when you look at it right now but um, it creates nice random shapes with a bit of movement and then I can go back in with my big soft brush just had to find it again. There it is. Or I can use a smaller soft brush if I want to and knock back the stuff that really is too much. Like, you know, this area here, that's too much. But I can leave areas that I like. I can leave the textures that I like. Squinting at it, deciding, you know what? Does this help the painting? or not. Is it giving the mood that I want? So it's kind of, it's almost like an impressionist technique, really. Except they would probably do it with a lot more paint. It creates detail where there isn't any detail and interest that is, uh, well, texture. It's full of texture. And those textures keep us involved when we look at the work. So now I'm at the stage where I kind of want to bring it home. Um, you know, try and refine this uh, without getting really fussy, uh, but bringing in enough detail to make this thing work. Uh, again, I want to keep this rhythm area here going, and I want to, uh, 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 you know, create this focal area, but without it being the most important part of all. So at this stage, what I want to do is, um, I want to bring in uh, some darks again into this area and define a little more here in the original photo uh, there were pool cues hanging on this wall and it does create a pattern and, and a nice rhythm I have to say I kind of like it um, the problem is that I don't want it to detract right from all the other stuff that's going on so I have to be very careful how far I push that I need a little more definition in this little guy here uh, the color is flattened out a little bit. I've let this dry just a touch. So I took a little break. I've let this dry just a little. And 
Now I want to be a little more refined in my approach. Uh, I could do a lot of stuff with a palette knife. The only thing is with a palette knife, and you'll see, I have to be careful when I do that because it drags, sometimes it takes the color off the background. You can see how that happens there. But maybe I will just kind of rough this in in a dark way, get some texture going, and try and um, go back and soften the areas that are that have too much grain in them. So let's see how that goes. You can see what happens there. I've got lots of little lights that come through in these zones here, and that's not really desirable. So, you know, whenever you do these things, you learn what works, what doesn't work, and you just have to continue working away until you leave the marks that you're happy with, if that makes any sense. I want to keep that dark back there. That really pushes the sense of light happening here. And make sure that I have enough paint. So often we don't use enough paint when we're painting. So don't be afraid to really get in there and, and lay it in. Because you can always take it out again and you can move it around. So. I'm still painting fairly thin in the dark areas, which is kind of, in a way, the tradition of painting with oil paint, you know, thinner in the shadows, uh, thicker in the lights, or as they call it, fat over lean in a lot of cases. Um, trying not to do this kind of an ala prima so that it's not, um, it's all painted in one go. And, of course, the challenges with that is keeping the focus, the concentration, the f um, your colors consistent. You know, you get tired when you paint. It's really important to take a break, get away from it, which I've just done, and come back to it with fresh eyes and a fresh look. Now it's got a little more of the depth that I like back there. I seem to keep going darker and darker um, in these areas, which really pushes the sense of light coming from the subject, but I also don't want it to be overpowering and letting a little bit of the brushwork show through in places helps open those dark areas up a little bit. So that's looking for those happy little accidents, as uh, Bob Ross would say. If I, you know, I can do 10 brush strokes here, and one might be right, and that's the one you want to leave, right? So. Okay. I'm gonna get a sense of substance here and a sense of light and shade, not false light and shade. That's really important to look at the shapes to get those working properly. Okay, I'm happier with this area now. Let's take a few more little details in here. Might just do it. Sometimes just putting your brush down, leaving it alone, leaves you with an abstract shape that I'm just gonna put the brush down like this and drop it down, pull it back, and it gives you some nice crisp edges and soft edges where the end of the brush is. So this is another way of painting. Instead of putting in a brush stroke, you can just press your brush down, leave the paint, and come back 
to it, just delicately putting in edges where you need to. And that's a nice way to work, by the way. We tend to think of brushes as literally brushing out all the time, but you can just drop shapes in. Follow the edges of things. And edges that are more important, they stay crisp. Edges that are less important, uh, they soften off. And there's a certain random quality to this that uh, is very appealing as well. Too much of the same kind of brush stroke can be very distracting also. To counter that is also this idea of rhythm. So sometimes your brush strokes can leave a rhythm that is also very appealing. I want to get that sense of light catching the top of these picture frames and the movement that comes down through here. And so far, I'm not unhappy with, with how this is going. I'm just going to put a couple of darker areas in the foreground. They don't have to be well defined. They just have to say there's something there that's in shadow. And it holds that foreground better. Let me do that. You can put, this is an example, I can put my brush down and then I can draw the, the, the brush into that. And that gives me variety. Keep good variety in your brushwork, if you can. Just placing things down at this point. Refining the shapes. Keeping again those corners darker, softer. In this case here, maybe it's lighter and softer. I may go back and address that section again. Very little paint on the brush, and I can draw just like a feather touch over top. Sometimes you can define a shape by, well, in a lot of cases, define a shape by the negative shapes around. Again, I can go back, place paint in, soften it down. And this is, this is a real bristle brush, so it pulls the paint away as much as it puts it down. And that can be good, but it, it does require a little practice to get that control.
kind of like it the, when his head sort of disappears into the background there. So I think I'll keep that idea. I can draw the brush down this way. And there's a bit of a rhythm that comes out this direction here. Just taking a bit of paint off my brush, I can I'll leave more brush strokes here and allow this rhythm, rhythm to come across this way as well. I said before, these areas here, this is important, this light, because it shows, it gives a sense of environment, but it shouldn't like just jump out of, of the, uh, the painting. It's a strong element, but I sort of feel like I want to knock it back a little. Um, I'm going to keep a couple of sharp edges here, just where it comes closest to the inside of the picture. Um, and maybe a fine little line to give that a little more description. Maybe across this way. And something coming in from the top here. Just those tiniest little details are sometimes all you need. Now there's a light fixture here, and I want to put a little bit of a detail into that. It comes this is where I really want to draw with the brush. Uh, if you've ever been to Cafe Sperl in Vienna, these are particularly beautiful light fixtures. And you don't have to tell the whole story again. Just defining the edges a little more. Can define one edge without defining all of the edges and we start to understand what something is. I want to knock back this little painting here, which is so close to his face. But I also, I want to knock down the value, but I want to keep it colorful enough as it comes up against him. And I think I want to add a little more color into his shoulder here. Make him a little more prominent. Pick up a couple of the lights that are hitting at the front of his sleeve. It's starting to pull together a little more, again, without a lot of detail. I'd like to grab another brush here and start to pull in some other colors into these picture frames.
It's where it's nice to have some premix color so it's fresh. I'm keeping more chroma, more intensity of color as I'm closer to him. So this is something that um, helps to bring your eye to, uh, to him as the focal area. And I can also bring my values down in areas that are less important. So if you look at, if you were to take a black and white photograph of this, it should work well with the values. Again, that warm and cool against each other. Want to get some of the light that happens in underneath the uh, this fixture here. Okay, I want to bring in my palette knife again and just start to pick up a couple more edges. Maybe along this one here. And maybe we'll pick something up down in here. And more chroma closer to him. Pick up this edge here, pick up this edge here. And you can see this rhythm now of these sort of horizontals against the verticals. I really want to get into some nice, light, cool color here. This is the concept in this painting, is to bring that light down into this area. Keep those sharp edges closer to the center of the, the picture. Um, when you paint with uh, thick, light colors, when it's framed and hanging underneath um, a proper uh, light, like in a gallery or, you know, with a, a, a frame light over top, these things pick up so nicely. When you, when you've got these thick colors that grab the light and it creates a sculptural element of bringing light to the lightest areas. If 
few careful passages of paint. Be precise where you need to be. And that those are the areas that you want people to look at. All right. Now it's getting a bit of a mood that I like. Um, I want to bring a little more color into the background behind this fella. Use a little more paint to do that. We don't really have to know what that is. I happen to know, it, happen to know that it's pool cues. But again, it's the peripheral. That's what we're looking at. Want to make sure that the shapes that I'm painting in here are not interfering with the focal area. So I just want to place paint down here. And by the way, you know, as this dries a little, uh, I have an opportunity to go back, of course, and soften edges down, even as it's drying a little. So. Now, just because I can, and it's sort of fun, I want to try something. I'm going to go in with a really strong chroma. Somewhere through, this is a, an orange, and I want to try and bring a little more attention closer to him. But I have to be careful I don't get too much of this going, because you know, if I start putting that everywhere, they're all going to, all these little spots will say, well, look at me, look at me, you know? So you have to be careful when you're doing these things, not to overdo them. And that nice cool light that I have coming from the lamp here. I want to pick that up in underneath this one as well. And that's pretty thick paint, so that's going to take a little while to dry, but that's all right. I don't mind. Um, be patient with it, let it dry. I'm going to get out one of my favorite brushes here, which is a kind of like a dagger brush and just bring in smallest amount of detail in light underneath this lamp. So we pick up a little bit of detail. In these areas right here, where it turns, there, there, maybe a little over here. Then I can also bring in some fairly intense yellow uh, chroma to pick up on a couple of the spots where I see this warm color happening. So right now, um, I find I've got too many of these little, you know, jagged things going on, uh, these sharp edges, and I want to reduce them. Uh, I'd like to drop them down a little bit, not too much. I just need to soften some of the edges. So I'm taking the same dagger brush, and I'm just going to lightly brush through the edges of some of these so that they're not so pronounced. 
if you have sharp edges, ask yourself, do, do they have to be that sharp everywhere? Maybe leave a couple, but you know, they should soften in areas. It looks more spontaneous and feels more natural this way. And I do like this brush for that purpose. Very, um, almost like a flimsy brush, really. It's very, very soft. Um, but you can get some beautiful effects. It's great for creating the effect of smoke, for example. Which I'm not going to do here, but if you need to, it's a great brush for doing that kind of thing. Maybe I'll even soften that orange that I put in there a little bit. <clears throat> the edges that are furthest from the focal area can afford to be softer than any. Sometimes I'll do this just with a dry brush. You can see just doing that knock that down, puts it into peripheral, but still gives a sense of atmosphere. And that's what I'm trying to create here is an atmosphere. If I want to op I want to put some air into an area. I just, you know, pull the paint away and allow a little of the texture from behind to get involved. Okay, there's some pretty serious chroma up against the wall up top. So I'm going to throw that in there too. And for all intents and purposes, I think I'm almost there. I'd like to put a little bit more light right in here. Close to him. Maybe pick up another edge. Maybe along here. You don't have to describe everything in detail. I just want to get a sense of what might be happening here. I happen to know the newspapers that are laying on a table in front of them. So I'm telling you what it is. But when we're looking at a scene, we don't gather all the information and process it immediately. We gather parts of it and then we make sense of it. So that's, I think, what a good painting can do as well. So we put in enough parts that people can kind of figure it out and finish the story for themselves. All right. I'm not unhappy with this. I think it's not too bad. It works for, for what I had in mind. It seems to work. So I'm going to leave it at this stage and try not to keep fussing with it. Because as soon as you start fussing with it, then you kill it. Uh, as I'm looking at it, these, this area right here is standing out too much. So I'm just going to try and pull that away a little more clean palette knife, just scrape it away. Let that disappear into the background more. Yes, I pulled paint away from there, but now I can go in with that little soft brush that I have and just knock that down a little more. It's, it's just, you know, playing with these things until you sort of get the feeling that you want. I know that sounds maybe a little oversimplistic. Um, this takes practice. It takes practice and patience and time. 
give yourself time and practice to do these things and you will do them. I did pull a little more orange up into there, I don't mind that. One, two, three, three areas of orange. I just want to pick it up a touch more here. And I think the other thing I want to do is bring in a sense of this wall that comes back here. And here as well. And I think that's going to do it for me. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was fun to paint. Uh, it was good that I took a little break because when I did, when I came back to it, I could see some areas that really needed some work. Here I am still fussing at it a little. Um, and the tendency is to do that. When you get back from it, you see things that you haven't seen before. And um, so, you know, that's okay to, to touch things up and, and, and make things better. But in the making better, try to keep the freshness as much as you can. Because it's that freshness and excitement that people connect with. That rhythm, if you will. Okay. I'm going to just pull this over here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from this. Um, this took me a little longer than I was hoping it would take, but it doesn't matter. This is pre-recorded. I may edit things down a bit. Um, and um, uh, think about rhythm when you're painting. Uh, imagine where the action is. Where is it coming from? Left, right? Is it from above? Is it from below? You know, sometimes when you're driving in a car, you have that rhythm of the, the lines on the road, you know, and, and they're moving uh, uh, in front of, well, they're coming underneath the car, and you're moving over those things, and they create this sense of movement. And a painting can have a lot of movement in it. Um, if you've got something that's repeating or a pattern that's similar that's repeating and moving you into a certain area towards your focal area, perspective, all those lines create a sense of rhythm as you go into the distance. So um, I'm hoping that's helpful. Uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down. It's okay. Whatever you want to do. Um, if you're interested uh, in following me, uh, please subscribe on YouTube. Um, I uh, am really happy with the response that I've been getting and, uh, you know, excited to, to keep doing this as long as, you know, you find it interesting. Uh, pass the link on to your friends uh, or anyone you think might be interested. I wish I'd had this resource when I was young. Um, and uh, please let me know your thoughts. Um, happy painting and uh, thanks again for checking in on my video. Take care.